This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So if we go through now and have a look at the fourth step within our revenue recognition process, we're now going to go through there and allocate the transaction price that we calculated or worked out in part three. And then we're going to split that across the performance obligations that we identified in step two. OK, now when we're allocating that transaction price across the separate performance obligations, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to allocate it based upon the standalone price of each of those obligations. So we will need to look at the total transaction price, which is usually less than buying the two performance obligations separately. It's used as an incentive, isn't it, to try and make you buy not just one item, but, but two aspects within that sale. So instead of just buying the goods, the seller will incentivize you to buy the services attached to the goods too by offering them at a combined discounted price. However, that discounted price then needs to be split across the two parts of the performance obligations. And we're going to do that using the standalone prices. So let's have a look here uh, at this example. Uh, so it asks us there, how is the $10,000 contract price allocated to the separate performance obligations? Uh, and just note, we're ignoring any time value of money. So there's, there's no discounting within it. That would just make it just a little bit too complicated at this point in time. So it says here, uh, we have a company that sells home entertainment systems, including a two-year repair and maintenance package. So if we weren't ignoring any discounting in the time value of money, then we might have to do some discounting on the repair and maintenance package. But no, thank you. Uh, not today. Not any day. Okay. Uh, so the transaction price is there at $10,000. We have two performance obligations from there, haven't we? Uh, the entertainment system being the goods and the repair and maintenance package, which is then the service, isn't it? Uh, it then gives us the standalone prices. The price of a home entertainment system without the repair and maintenance contract is $9,000. So if you were just buying the goods separately, no repair and maintenance contract, there would then be a $9,000 selling price. If then you bought the repair and maintenance package separately, that will cost you $2,000. So at some point you thought, ah, oh, I think it might be worthwhile buying that repair and maintenance package. And you go back a few days later, you would have to pay $2,000 for it, having paid $9,000 for the home entertainment system. That must be a good home entertainment system at $9,000. Wow. Uh, so how are we going to allocate it? But well, we need to allocate the transaction price at the $10,000. Uh, part of it needs to go towards the entertainment system, the other part towards the repair and maintenance package. We're going to base it upon the standalone prices of nine and two thousand dollars. So effectively, uh, the standalone price total comes to eleven thousand dollars. Of that, nine thousand out of the eleven, so nine elevenths, will be allocated to the goods, the entertainment system, and then two elevenths will then be allocated to the maintenance and repair package. How do we then apply that? Well, we're applying the 9 11th and the 2 11th to the transaction price of $10,000. So if we look at the answer here, uh, you've got two performance obligations, the home cinema system, so the entertainment system. So you've got 9,000 over the 11, multiplied by 10 gives me 8,182. And then the maintenance is there at two elevenths of the 10,000, which gives me 1,818. Okay. So the key bit there is that you allocate the transaction price based upon the standalone price of the goods and the standalone price of the services. You total the standalone prices together and then you use that as the denominator in your fraction to apply to the transaction price in total. Once we've got there, we, we then need to start thinking about how we then recognize that revenue. We haven't yet quite recorded the debits and the credits within the financial statements. 
So that's what we're going to start to look at within the next video. We've done the four steps. We now then need to go through there and look at the fifth step, which is how we look at recognizing the revenue of 8182 from the sale of goods. And is it there, the revenue of 1818? Okay. Uh, from the provision of the services. So I'll see you in a few minutes. This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com.